Right. Thank you. I rise this evening to share my concerns in this place about the Coalition's school chaplaincy program. There is in our country a mounting and substantial evidence base that young people, especially young lesbian, gay, bisexual or other gender non-conforming people, are being discriminated against by many school chaplains provided through the National School Chaplaincy Program. I've worked with school chaplains over the years and I have found them to be well-intentioned people. But I also know the very real suffering that anti-gay beliefs that some of them hold can cause LGBT young people, even when they intended no harm. As we know, LGBT young people are at an extremely disproportionate risk of self-harm of self-harm, suicide and general feelings of shame and depression compared, depression compared to non-LGBT youth. These feelings are generated not because there's anything wrong with their identity, but because of the stigma directed towards them by others. And so while many young people have positive chaplain experiences, we need to, in this place, listen to what young people tell us, especially our most vulnerable youth. Last week, LGBT rights organisation All Out, they ran a survey. They ran a survey inviting Australians to share their stories of school chaplains. Over 2,200 responded, including over 1,000 high school students aged 13 to 18. Many of these students came from WA and of these, 15 per cent identified as LGB or T. The Australian community, we've been debating chaplains for some time, but this is the first time we've held, heard from students themselves and the stories that we are hearing from them are extremely concerning. Dozens of first-hand accounts from students that described chaplains as being explicitly anti-gay. And here are just two short excerpts. One student says, My best friend was getting bullied by other students last year for being gay, so I went to speak to our school chaplain about it. He suffers from anxiety and depression, has attempted suicide in the past and occasionally self-harms. He spoke to our chaplain about being bullied and about how he has begun to believe what people are saying about him, saying about him about being a fag and disgusting, a gay idiot. The chaplain told him that his bullies were right and that homosexuality is a degrading sin that sends people to hell. That night I got a phone call from his mum telling me he had tried to overdose on medicine pills and was in hospital having his stomach pumped. And another. This term, the chaplain warned us against non-marital sex. When I asked him about what a lesbian couple of faith would do if they couldn't get married, he simply replied that gay and lesbian people could never be proper Christians. He went on to talk about how gays and lesbians were unnatural, indecent and perverse. This event made me feel as if my sexuality was something to be ashamed of. I consider myself a strong person and for this to affect me so much, made me realise the dangers of mixing religion with public education. I think it's important to mention that a minority of students, about 5 to 10 per cent of students in this survey, reported positive experiences with chaplains, including chaplains helping them uh, overcome uh, self-esteem issues and bullying. Of the 1,000 or so parents and other adults who were part of this survey, 25 per cent reported positive chaplain experience including how chaplains had boosted confidence. However, most of the stories were negative and almost all of the stories from LGBT young people were negative. As well as the stories of those two I quoted, students described chaplains helping them to pray the gay away and advising them to sleep with a member of the opposite sex to correct their same-sex attraction. One very serious story involved a student being told by a chaplain that they should leave home because they had homosexual parents. 
The family felt unwelcome at the school and they subsequently moved. Many non-Christian students also reported that chaplains had harassed them about adopting religion. In my years as a senator, I've heard countless stories of challenges that LGBT young people face at school, but even I am completely overwhelmed by some of the heartbreaking stories that this survey has revealed. All breaches of program guidelines and the duty of care owed to these students, a duty of care that these stories demonstrates as being breached, a duty of care um, that says that these services must not be biased on the grounds of religious ideology or sexual sexuality. I also note quite extraordinarily that the cu current government has refused to give any assurance that even the current government's program standards and safeguards will be maintained. It could lead to you know, the kind of proselytising uh, being set back, wound back even further. Now, even this is not the whole picture. I've had uh, a few very serious reports passed on to me this week, again stories by West Australian school students who are especially vulnerable because of their sexual orientation. These stories are describing chaplains actually committing serious criminal offences against them. Needless to say, these stories will be further investigated and the children will be connected to the police and appropriate support services where this hasn't already happened. But obviously, we are dealing with a system that is broken and not working, a system that is failing our most vulnerable youth. I know some great chaplains. They work with love and authenticity, doing wonderful things for our young people. But on a national level, we must face the fact that our chaplaincy program is failing Australian young people. We know this because of the steady accumulation of media investigations, revealing every from, everything from the distribution of homo homophobic Bible zines in our schools to continuous proselytising to students against their parents' wishes. We know it because of the findings of the Northern Territory Ombudsman in 2009 and indeed in 2011 similar findings by the Federal Ombudsman. We know it because of the damning reviews of this program by academic experts such as Professor Marion Maddox. So it is extraordinary to me that in the face of such issues that qualified non-religious youth workers are being pushed out of this program in favour of uh, chaplains. A choice between a chaplain or a youth worker is actually being taken away from our schools. Schools will now only be able to choose a chaplain. Extraordinary that a government that has promoted choice and autonomy from our school, for our schools is forcing chaplains over youth workers on those schools. I'd really also like to highlight that questions have begun to surface about the linkages between Australia's three biggest school chaplain providers. They are Access Ministries, Scripture Union Queensland and Generate Ministries. And links between these programs and extreme anti-gay movements such as the uh, Lucerne Evangelical Conference. This uh, conference is well known for its links to anti-gay movements that promote anti-homosexuality laws in um, African countries, places like Uganda and Nigeria, where we have seen extreme anti-gay laws put forward, uh, promoting things like imprisonment and the death penalty. So this week, the High Court will hand down its decision on whether the National Schools Chaplaincy Program is unconstitutional. And I hope that the court will find that the Constitution does indeed prevent the federal government from handing money over to religious providers to put untrained chaplains in our schools who, however well intended, in many cases are harming our children. Regardless of the outcome, it is important to me to see this program is stopped. Any person giving counselling to our young people should have the proper qualifications as recognised by organisations like the Psychological Association and that they don't hold discriminatory views. 
Our young people have told us very clearly that they do not feel safe at school, and it is our job to Order. listen to Your them time has and expired. respond. Senator